audience. She's all promote her. There we go. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's meeting of the Jones Library Board of Trustees. Um, I'm gonna ask that you signify your presence <clears throat> verbally far. Here. Thank you, Jean. Here. Tammy. Here. Lee Edwards. Lee. Here. Thank you. Um, I'm Bob Pam. Are you present? Yes. Thank you, Bob. Okay, we are also joined by our colleague Bob Parent and some colleagues from uh, FAA. Thank you for thank you for coming this morning. Okay, I have no changes or additions to the agenda. Um, item three is the approval of minutes. Tammy? Yes, I, I have a correction. Um, under D, the personnel planning on the second page. Hold on one second, please. This is a correction to the minutes? Yes. So what you want to do is wait until they're moved okay. and seconded. <laughs> okay. That's okay. So uh, would someone like to move the approval of the minutes of I move, I move to approve thank you second is there a second. second okay thank you okay Tammy corrections under um the personnel planning and policy which is section D on the second page yes um the first letter says the results the uh PPP will be meeting in May to discuss the evaluation process the results of which we presented at the June board meeting that's incorrect. It's we will present the um, the forms will yep. be presented at the June meeting. Great. Gene, you have that correction? Yep. Okay. Any other corrections to the minutes? Okay. Uh, on approval of the minutes, Farah? Yes. Thank you, Jean. Yes. Tammy. Yes. Lee. Yes. Bob. Yes. <clears throat> and Austin votes yes. Thank you for that. Okay, next item is a uh, public comment. Uh, we have 13 attendees. Thank you for coming this morning. If anybody would like to make a public comment, if they would raise their virtual hand. Um, Tony Cunningham. Thank you, Tony Cunningham, District 1. I have two questions about the capital campaign. As you know, the library is still $900,000 in arrears on the payment of $2 million promised by January 31st. The report from the capital campaign at your last meeting indicated that $2,357,000 was in hand. The memorandum of agreement stated that the library shall deposit with the town treasurer all amounts of the library project donations as and when the same is received by the library, less any direct and reasonable fundraising costs and expenses. Expenses up to April 1st were reported at 405,000. At a minimum, why hasn't the other 300,000 that is in hand been paid to the town? And secondly, what is the trustees plan to pay the M MBLC back the 2.9 million if the project doesn't proceed? At least 2.3 million of the MBLC money has been spent already. How will the trustees raise this money to pay back the state? This should not be an expense to the town. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. As you know, we don't engage in a back and forth during public comment. Appreciate your questions. Next is Kelly Irwin. Hi, I just wanted to say, uh, a uh, big thanks to all of you on the trustees for all the hard work that you've been doing month after month, year after year. And if there's anything that we and the friends can do to help, please let us know. 
Thank you, Kelly. Okay, um, I see Maria, Maria Kopicki. Thank you. Uh, I see the recording button is on, so thank you for recording this meeting. And um, this is a request uh, for you, Austin. Uh, you so. said that there are 13 attendees. Could you please um, read out the names of who is attending the meeting this morning? Thank you. I don't know that that is, um, that that is typically done. Uh, so I don't know that everybody who's attending the meeting wants to be identified. So I'm not going to read out their names. Okay. Uh, any other public comment? All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, included in your packet were various memorandum of understandings or memorandum of agreements with the Friends of the Jones Library and with the town. And they are there to provide um, information for the trustees so that we can recall what it is that we have, uh, what it is that we have agreed to. Um, are there any questions about any of those MOAs or MOUs? Bob. Yes, Ed. At the last meeting, if you recall, um, and the minutes show that under C9, uh, <clears throat> I had proposed that I uh, go to the friends and review just what they are doing in terms of <clears throat> receiving uh, and expending those funds. At that time, there was a uh, question as to whether or not that was permissible. And consequently, there was agreement that we would then bring all of these documents with us to this meeting yeah. so that um, we could actually review that. The Capital Campaign Memorandum of Understanding, which was approved on uh, October 23rd, 2019, uh, under accountability, provided in its last line, mechanisms for confirmation of funds received and expenditures shall be established. Unfortunately, I don't understand exactly what those were, and they certainly didn't ever include the treasurer of the library. So I had proposed that I actually do something about that. Um, and as you, as you recall at the last meeting, you said, do not do anything until we talk about it at to today's meeting. So that is why um, I believe this set of documents is on the agenda. Correct. It is on the agenda so that everybody could see what it is that we were that what it is that we were talking about. So uh the question of uh how we should um confirm the receipts and establish uh, and expenditures, that's what's contemplated. And I think what we should ask is we should ask for a report from the Capital Campaign Committee, as we typically get, as to their um, as to their receipts and their expenditures. And that report should be made publicly. And it should be made to the whole board. That's my view. Yeah, Bob. Um. <laughs> I, I did not and do not find that sufficient, frankly. Um, the capital campaign makes its own decisions with respect to uh, the amount to be held in reserve uh, for expenditures to be made out of the capital campaign funds. Um, and consequently, there can be differences between the amount which is in on hand and the amount which is transmitted as per the agreements uh, to the town. Uh, that uh, seems to me something where we should have an established mechanism. Um, it is something where uh, the <clears throat> reporting mechanism seems to me is somewhat uh, weaker than it should be. Uh, and it, it is clear that that 
the capital campaign should not be making all of these decisions essentially uh, on its own without further uh, discussion where there is some disagreement. Uh, the provisions of this uh, memorandum of understanding with the capital campaign provides that where there is disagreement, a uh, committee for mediation should then be established or should exist uh, in order to resolve such questions. Um, I'm simply unaware of that com uh, committee for me mediation uh, existing or uh, being able to actually function in a question of this kind. It is appropriate for that to be done at least through that committee rather than as a board question. Uh, so uh, that is why I am suggesting that this is something that ought to be and ought to have been uh, in existence. Mediation in the agreement is contemplated where there is a disagreement. Yes. Um, I don't know yet of any disagreement. So in the absence of a disagreement, this MOA is pretty clear that you don't establish a mediation committee unless you have something to mediate. How do you determine there's a disagreement without getting any data other than that which, which the capital campaign provides you with? I think it's very, I think it, it's very clear. You ask the capital campaign committee, whatever it is that you want to ask them, if you want to ask them to provide more information about funds received and expenditures, they provide that, they provide that information. I, I don't know how to go further with this because um, if you do not understand what the purposes are of the general word audit or the general word review, uh, then there is nothing further to discuss here. Uh, any other conversation about th this um... Mm -hmm. Memorandum of understanding with the with the with the friends. Bob, do you want to make a motion? The motion that I made last time is what I would make now, which is that um, that the treasurer of the board of trustees um, review with the capital campaign staff or leadership or both uh, the receipt and expenditure uh, and transfers of funds uh, as they have occurred and are expected to occur in the future. Is there a second to Bob's? And, and Bob, you're proposing this as an alternative to having a conversation with the entire board of trustees. I'm waiting to see if there's anybody who has anything to say here. If no one has anything to say, then the only way to proceed is through a motion. So I will pr propose a motion. Okay. Is there a, is there a, is there a second to Bob's motion? Okay. There's no second to the motion, so I don't think we uh, we proceed further with that. Okay. Um, Lee, do you want to say anything on this question? No, I think had the motion gone forward, I would have abstained. Um, I think we're providing all the information that we've been asked to provide. Uh, I don't, that's all that I have to say. Okay. All right, any other questions on the these memorandum of, of understanding? Okay, thank you. Uh, next is a report from the Library Building Committee. 
Uh, you all know, I take it by now, that we received one bid from a general contract. Oh, I'm sorry. G yeah, Gene. Yeah, for, for this agenda item, uh, based on a conversation I have with the Massachusetts Ethics Commission, because my spouse is an employee of the Friends of the Jones, I'm going to recuse myself. Um, someone would need to take meeting notes for this particular agenda item. Um, and if somebody could text me when this particular agenda item is finished, that'd be awesome. Thanks. Right. Farah. I'll do it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gene. Thank you. So you all know that we received one bid from uh, a general contractor. Uh, the general contractor is a very well-regarded general contractor. Uh, the bid came substantially over what we had um, budgeted for the project. Uh, the library building committee met, the town manager reviewed with the building committee uh, a series of options uh, that we would be exploring um, between now and the 10th of, 10th of June. Uh, those options range from go forward to try to accept the general contractor bid that would require an appropriation of an authorization from town council and additional funding, uh, turn down the bids, um, explore the possibility of rebidding in the fall, uh, explore the possibility of making some changes to the design of the project in the hope that that would help to close the gap. Uh, during the course of the library building committee meeting, uh, we heard that uh, just getting one bid in and of itself uh, could help explain some of the cost overrun, that the estimation, the 75% estimation that was done contemplated that we would get um, five bids. Uh, we are trying to understand why we didn't get more uh, interest from general contractors. That could be a from a variety of things, including the time that we went out to bid, uh, this being the season in which there's a lot of contracting um, activity. So uh, we didn't have a clear sense at that time uh, why these why we didn't get more bids. Uh, we, what we know is that we got one. Uh, we, I think, will want to continue to explore as much as we are able uh, why that was the situation. The subcontractor bids that were filed uh, seemed to be within um, the scope of what had been anticipated for those that were filed. So uh, understanding the gap between the subcontractor bids that were filed and the general contractor bid uh, is again important for us. Uh, important for us to do. So the first thing is: Do you have any questions about the status of um, uh, of the the building project about the the uh, library building committee meeting? Seriously. Bob? Yes. Did you have a question? <clears throat> well, many questions. <clears throat> In order for the project to continue, what, from the perspective of the library and its finances, um, the question is has always been our ability to meet our obligation under the plan to cover those costs. Um, I'm going to read a long statement. It is because um, by the time the decisions that we're talking about are made, I do not anticipate still being a member of the board. And so consequently, uh, the only opportunity that I will have is to speak now on those questions. Sure. So uh, if you'll forgive me, I will read for a while. 
I don't know whether the project will proceed. In the end, the town manager will decide how to balance the benefits of the future project with the risks to the town and library. To evaluate the financial risks, I have been looking at the capital campaign's results since the, since the town council approval to go forward last December. My estimate of the project cost in December was $46 million. At that level, $7 million in new money had to be raised by the library beyond the pledges, receipts, and anticipated value of grants and sales of tax credits reported then. The bulk was to come from the community campaign consisting of individual and institutional supporters with ties to Amherst and the Pioneer Valley. Now the estimate based on the single actual bid adds $7 million more to that fundraising goal. If costs can be reduced, I can imagine the additional cost coming down to four or five million dollars, but the total remains at $12 million or more to be raised. Prior to that point, the campaign had enormous success in lining up institutional funding sources to fund the project. I know that the staff there are continuing to seek, seek such funding, but I don't know of any large contributors in the wings. I hope that the leaders of the campaign will inform us now of anything hopeful on that front. However, the local efforts have been disappointing. From December 1, 2023 through May 1, 2024, cash gifts of 825,000, I'm going to delete the $1 pieces and just round them, if you will, uh, $825,000 have been received but pledges were thereby reduced by $396,000. Of these sums, 250,000 came from the pledge by Amherst College, which I understand is an annual pledge. So a total of $429,000 in new funds has been raised in the five months since the project was approved, a surge in the month of December, then lesser amounts since then. As I see it, the campaign would have to raise two and a half to three and a half million dollars per year for the library to be able to borrow enough to cover any balance within the time frame set up for this project and with loan payments that would not reduce the draw against the endowment below an acceptable level. This is at least twice the annual goal I had thought possible last November. I believe that the odds on the project and the risks are no longer acceptable. If the project cannot go forward, we revert to improvements within the current building shell and footprint. The idea of looking at creative options for doing so were rejected while the expansion project was live and fundraising was ongoing. I believe we can and should start alternative planning. At this point, it won't insult the project architects or undermine the capital campaign. I won't be here for the decisions that will be made on these questions, but I will put in my two cents. It will take a year to start upgrading the heating sources and piping once the reviews, design, bidding, and permitting are considered. I suggest putting an industrial scale heat pump system on the ground or using part of what is now a problematic glass atrium roof that needs replacement anyway. The piping changes are needed in any case. Much of the design work in the specifications for the HVAC and fire suppression systems have already been done for the expansion project. Any backyard space required will be less than would have been used for the larger project. I have advocated heat pumps for a long time for the Woodbury room and the special collection, each of which has different needs than the rest of the library in terms of climate or hours. Each space is self-contained and I believe small enough for units readily available at reasonable cost and eligible for rebates. If it is economical, 
to use just one system for the whole building, then of course that should be done instead. UMass maintains several programs and an institute that serves nonprofit entities which are developing energy efficient and sustainable remodels at low or no cost. As I understand it, these are not just student projects. Some suggestions may be impractical, but we can use all the ideas we can get. Without changing the floor plan, the collection weeding, space planning for the temporary move out, and the new building design work can help the library reconsider how some spaces can be repurposed. Other people will need to work with library staff on how to best use the current physical layout. Internal structural design changes will clearly be limited and probably delayed by five years or more while other capital projects move forward. When additional library work is considered, I hope that the boiler room will be gone and available and I would like to see two single unit bathrooms on the first floor, probably behind the reference area. The library will still be a wonderful and beloved home of community, education, entertainment, and activity for our town. Unite around what it does and can do without useless bitterness. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Okay, any other questions uh, about the building committee? So uh, I share with Bob the sense that we cannot go really consider going forward with the general contractor bid that we have um, in hand. I share with Bob the sense that um, it would be a lot to ask of the capital campaign committee to kind of go forward with the amount that would need to be raised. Uh, and uh, I don't see going to the town council at this point to ask the town council to raise the borrowing uh, authorization. That means from my point of view, we cannot go forward uh, with of the bid that we have in hand. Uh, the ultimate decision about going forward with the bid that we have in hand uh, rests with the town manager, but um, the memorandum of understandings that we've had contemplate a recommendation from the board of trustees. Toward that end, I would like to introduce the following motion to recommend the town manager reject all Jones Library expansion renovation project bids from April 2024, including the filed sub bids and the general contractor bid. If there is a second, then we can uh, talk about uh, talk about that more. I will second. Okay. So any questions about um, or any discussion of this motion? Bob Parent, do you want to just say a word about what, what is involved, just reminding us kind of bureaucratically, if you will, about what is involved in rejecting the bids? Um, it's a fairly straightforward project. Our OPM Colliers will get online with Bid Docs, which is the company that is managing the bidding process or to the public, and will uh, take the necessary steps to reject all the bids. They are, all appear online as rejected, and the process stops. Right. Okay. Yeah, Bob. Is that an action after we vote or after the manager votes? It's it's we're we're recommending to the town manager that the rejection of the bids would come by the town manager, not by us, since the project is, if you will, the town project. Okay, other discussion. All, all right, Farah. Um, just a question about, does this mean that we would not ask to 
solicit more bids going forward? This means that we would ask the town manager to reject the um, existing bids. That's all it's that's all it okay. says. Okay, thanks. Okay, any other any other discussion? Okay. On the motion to ask the town manager to reject the bids, uh, I'm gonna ask you to vote, Farah. How do you vote? Yes. Thank you, Tammy. Yes. Bob? Yes. Lee? Yes. Uh, and Austin votes yes. Okay. Uh, next is a report from buildings and facilities. Um. We have not, sorry, we have not met. We are scheduled to meet uh, next week, Sh Sharon. Buildings and facilities. Could be. I think it's next week. So I will have something to report next month, I guess. But we did go, some of us were able to go to the North Amherst Library opening, which was really festive and it's really beautiful and make me ha made me have great hope for the library project. Great. Farah, I'm gonna ask that, um, that the Buildings and Facility Committee take up with some urgency um, that we should begin to go forward uh, with the planning for a repair alternative. Uh, and that that the Buildings and Facilities Committee working with the director and with people from the town should prepare as soon as possible uh, an estimate of the work to be done, a sense of when that work could be scheduled, uh, and a plan to go forward. Okay. And again, I'm going to just ask you to work with Sharon to see whether you can accelerate your meeting schedule uh, so that we can begin to make progress in considering this alternative plan um, as soon as possible. Okay, sounds good. Okay, um, Gene, I see is back in the meeting. Gene, are you back? I am back. Thank you. Okay, anything else for um, buildings and facilities? Bob? Uh, um, <clears throat> The planning to date has been essentially about replacing the boiler which died a year ago. Um, that is a short term response, but it is anything buildings and facilities reviews and discusses with the town or to at least explore the possibilities of uh, replacing the, the current fossil fuel fueled uh, systems that we are currently using with a larger uh, heat pump type system. Uh, because if I am right, that is going to take a year to go through all of the uh, processing in order to actually get anything done. Uh, if it is not considered an emergency, uh, then we might as well also be looking at what happens if we do it the right way. Thank you, Bob. Okay, other, other things for buildings and facilities. Right, thank you. Uh, we are not now in doing public comment. 
So just 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 to be clear. Okay. Next item is development. Lee Edwards. Yeah. Uh, you have the various reports in your packet. Um, the the uh, annual fund is chugging along and is still slightly ahead of where we were at this time last year. Just a little under $100,000 with 572 gifts. Um, so that's the worst. The gap between this year and last year is holding is holding constant. And uh, we keep moving forward on the annual camp, camp on the annual fund campaign. Uh, where we are on the capital campaign is in the last month, we took in a little over a hundred thousand dollars in additional uh, pledges. And um, <laughs> we keep going under uh, very difficult circumstances because uh, it does, you know, I can't count anymore the number of times we have thought that this project was moving forward and the campaign has moved into a different gear only to have the momentum um, stopped. Uh, we will really only know what can be raised from the community campaign when we are sure that we are breaking ground for this project. Um, and in terms of collecting actual funds, uh, given where we are right now, I think it would be highly unrealistic to expect any individual to contribute actual funds to this project. Uh, and yes, there are people who we know who wish to contribute to the project, but who at this point uh, are not even willing to make a pledge because the stop and start nature of the project does not inspire confidence in a donor base. So we are continuing. On the other hand, the upside, if there is an upside to our current situation, is it does allow us to do um, what's been one of the most effective uh, things that we have done in the course of the campaign so far, which is to tour people through the building. Because allowing people to see the building and to understand the difficulties, not just of the way the internal, current internal space is configured, but the limitations imposed on the programs that the building can support because of the limited footprint, especially with regard to fulfilling the needs of teenagers in the town and of making it possible for people who are using the ESL facility to really be able to navigate the library uh, it, 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 in the current situation, um, their administrative and their programmatic activities are separated. And it, if you could imagine, that's, that's what I do when I take people on tours. If you're somebody who does not know English, who's new to the community, you're coming in to access a service that's supposed to make you prepare you for citizenship, teach you English. You cannot figure out how to get there from anything when you walk in the front door. Uh, and the teen space, as I tour people through, I take them to that dismal corner of the basement level of the library, which is now a basement level. It is um, a disgrace. And that's what I say on my tour. And it's a, it's a disgrace, I think, to the town. And it's a, it's a, shows great disrespect to the young people of this town. 
And that's what I say when I take the tour. Thank you. Lee, can you remind us how much cash the Capital Campaign Committee has in hand? I cannot, but if I, I will, I will have that number for you for the next meeting. Um, Tara, one other thing. Uh, I wonder if um, it would be possible in the Capital Campaign Committee to begin to explore the possibility of um, uh, seeing what funds that have been pledged or what funds that have been uh, provided and committed might be available to help uh, defer the library obligation to provide $1.8 million within the next three years uh, to help go forward with the HVAC uh, replacement and the um, need to do something about the atrium. Uh, I will find out uh, the answer to how much we have actual funds in hand. And uh, we are discussing how to communicate with um, our donors, both people who have pledged and people who have contributed actual money to the campaign so far uh, to ask them what they would like done with their contribution or toward fulfilling their pledge should the project not go forward. Right. Thank you very much, Lee Farr. Um, <clears throat> Lee, first, I wanted to thank you and the Capital Campaign for all the work you're doing. I know it's extremely frustrating and you're under a lot of scrutiny and criticism, but some of us really do appreciate all that you're doing. And also, I really agree with you about the teen space, because that as someone who has a teenager, that really frustrates me. Uh, but the one question I had looking at some notes I'd made earlier is, um, I just wanted to make sure, has the campaign and library turned over 1.6 million to the town? I had okay. a number, is that correct? I just wanted to make sure I had that number written down somewhere earlier. I think that's, I think that that is the. Sharon Again, is I... not. Okay. That's I just that was just the question I had yeah. about the campaign. And thank you so much. Thank you, Vera. Bob. Yeah. Um, I would conf confirm the one point six million dollars. It was five hundred thousand dollars that was given uh, a, a year ago. Um, the <laughs> library sent to the town three hundred thousand dollars, which came from uh, funds that we have received over over the last couple of years um but which which uh by board action we had committed to this project and so therefore we sent it that over and then most recently the <clears throat> the capital campaign sent over eight hundred thousand dollars as i understand it so that receipts to the town were a million six um i also had uh Two other questions. Sure. Uh, one of the uh, results of the capital campaign was a uh, both a video which is being broadcast on uh, public television, but also the raw footage. And some of that raw footage, I believe, can be edited into a piece which would be useful for us for purposes, whether or not the project goes forward, uh, or perhaps two versions of it. Um, so um, I don't know who would do that, and I don't know who has custody of that at this moment, but I would hope that someone is thinking about using that as a piece available for the library's uh, continuing fundraising efforts. <laughs> uh, third was, in the event that the project does go forward, um, at the last meeting I had asked about who and where the 
uh, cost of uh, insurance that will be provided between the library and the strong house or the historical society um, will be coming from. And I was told that I would uh, get information on that at the next meeting. Yeah. Bob, anything else? Not on this. Bob Parrott, can you provide the information that Bob Pam has uh, requested? Uh, yes, the insurance would be a requirement as currently um, identified in the contract documents for the project, a requirement of the contractor to provide. Great. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Other things for development. Lee, do you know about the the video and the footage? And Sharon, do you know about the video and the footage? And my understanding, well, the video is presumably playing. Yeah. And uh, my understanding of the footage is the footage now uh, was paid for by funds raised by the capital campaign. And so presumably it belongs to the friends of the Jones Library as the managers of the capital campaign. Uh, and uh, Bob is correct that um, footage beyond what was actually used in the video uh, is part of what the funds raised by the capital campaign paid for. And so it, it's there as to who might edit it or what purposes it could be put for, used for, uh, that would be obviously to be decided. Great. Okay, any other questions um, for development, the development committee? Uh, Sharon, I'm, at this point, I'm not sure that um, we need to keep our colleagues from FAA and Colliers um, on the on the. I mean, they're obviously willing, to, welcome to continue. But um, is there any reason that they need to continue to be here? No, I agree with you. So I do want to thank uh, our colleagues from Colliers and FAA for the work that they um, have done for the work that they are doing to help us understand where we are right now um, with respect to the project. Uh, my hope is that we can meet again, that the trustees can meet again um, early next week uh, to begin to think some more about where we are with respect to the project and where we are with respect to the alternative plan. Uh, Sharon, is it possible that we could meet uh, a week from today at nine o'clock in the morning? Yes. So again, trustees, uh, could you meet a week from today at nine o'clock in the morning? Yes. Yes. Okay, hearing no dissent, uh, let's notice that meeting and colleagues from FAA and Colliers will be in touch if it would be helpful to have you all um, attend that attend that meeting. Okay, thank you, Austin. Thank you, thank, everyone. Thank you, Alan. Take care. Take care. Okay, so um Next item is a report from personnel planning and policy. Okay, we have not met since the last board meeting. We'll be meeting tomorrow. Um, on our agenda is to review the evaluation forms, which we will be bringing to you for your approval at the June meeting. Um, that's pretty much all I have um, to report. And Farah, do you have a report? from the Jedi Committee? Um, we met a couple of weeks ago. We discussed uh, continuing the survey um, 
for a couple more weeks, uh, make a last push in the superintendent's letter to the schools um, and some of the other resources, the library weekly newsletter. And then we were talking about sort of collating the information and doing a report. So Mia offered to do that with one of our other members. Um, some of the other uh, things we talked about was um, our committee uh, attending some of the DEI workshops uh, organized by the town. Uh, and a few of us went to the one on microaggressions at the banks last week. And that was uh, interesting. Um, besides that, we're just talking about since we've been meeting as a group for a year and a half now, sort of documenting what we've done so far and coming up with the report. But that'll happen gradually over the next few months. Um, that's all. We're meeting again next week at 1230 if anyone is interested in attending what what day? oh sorry Friday next uh, May 24th which I believe is okay. next Friday thank you Farah yep. anything else from PPP nope that, that's it for now any questions for either Tammy or Farah okay uh, next item is the Budget Committee, Mr. Pan. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the meeting for this month it was canceled. The meeting for last month was canceled. So there's not much I can report of the committee's activities. Um, <clears throat> the uh, director uh, reported to the Finance Committee on the budget proposal that was adopted at the last meeting. That budget proposal um, essentially assumed that um, as of July 1, we would be out of this building and would be in temporary spaces. Those plans are clearly not going to happen. Yep. Um, so I think it is requisite that, that we now prepare at least one and perhaps two different budget proposals to look at where we will be in the event that we are still in this building for the next 12 months. Um, <clears throat> I believe <coughs> um, it is probable that that, that will require uh, some changes in what it is that we are doing. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, at the last board meeting, um, a proposal was made uh, prepared by John Shannon for a, a credit card uh, that was then referred back to this meeting um, that uh, a new proposal has been prepared since there has not been any budget committee meeting. There has not been any review of that proposal. So that, frankly, the first time I see it is when I get the documentation for this meeting. Um, it is not, in my opinion, ready for prime time. I would not vote for it as it currently stands. Um, but I think it is a a good thing to do, but it just needs some more work. Uh, I think John may have some additional things to say about it if he wish, wishes. Yeah, I do. Um, I actually did do some uh, some work on it based on the conversation in the last meeting. Um, and so, and I also spoke to the uh, to the person in the town who handles the town credit card just to look at their controls and get a sense of how they use it. Um, and so the the updates that I've made to it, I would say, are, whereas before I suggested having two cards, we would only have one now. And that card would be for use by staff department heads, I would say, and the library director um, and would remain in the office and would only be used in the office. Um, I mean, physically, so that if somebody wanted to do a transaction, they would have to have it approved by their uh, by both the the library director and the deputy treasurer slash deputy treasurer in the same way that we approve invoices right now. 
and that they would then arrange with with us, meaning well, with really with me, um, to sit in the office and do the transaction. Um, and uh, that would be, I would say, would probably be the the single biggest change in um, what we've looked at. And it's it's kind of it's reflective of what the town does in their experience having a card and how they find it works best. Um, other than that, I would say the use of the card would be pretty much as we discussed it before. Um, we would, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I think those are the biggest changes I can think of. Um, and so if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, John. Any, any, uh, any questions about, yeah, Sharon. Thank you. Yeah, I would love to know what uh, concerns the treasurer has with it as it's written now. Bob? Um, the heart of it is that uh, uh, just as now with payments that are made uh, using checks, uh, Proposals come in from from department heads, uh, and essentially they uh, make place an order. Uh, that would not change. It does not require the department heads to come into the office and do anything there. What happens is that the documentation relating to that comes to the office. It is approved by the director, and then uh, a approved by the treasurer or assistant treasurer as, as necessary. Um, what is different here is that there would be two transactions. One transaction would be for the purchase of the item. And then the second transaction would be on a monthly basis, uh, reviewing all of the claims that are, are reported uh, to the credit card company and then making a payment to the credit card company. So each of those essentially involves exactly the same process of uh, department heads making a purchase. Uh, the review of that and the payment of that is done within the office um, by, the, by the heads as necessary. Um, and here, there's simply a second transaction. So the description of it is still not accurate from my perspective as to the way in which it should and would work. Well, that the just I'd like to say the update I made to the document reflects the conversation you and I had, where you, you know, you talked about that as being a kind of a necessary control, and it and it is, and it actually is in the document now that there would be two different two different approvals, which. Which it, it does differ from how we we handle invoices right now, um, and uh, but but I do agree with you. It's a necessary one, um, and I did add it. John, could you just direct us to where you added it? Sure. Yeah. Let me just Thanks. one moment. Um, uh, da, da, da. Um, one moment, please. Uh, I just have to find it. I did put At it the in. top of page two, you reference. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm looking for. Um, it's a whole credit card order process. Yeah. And I thought that I put and I apologize if I didn't, but I thought I put it here because um, I did. Bob and I met and I agree it's a it's a good control. And I thought I had added it to the document. Um, and if you would yes. like, yeah, here, I'll okay, yeah, no, here. into the oh, record. And oh, we like can edit hold on, hold on, hold on. May I? May I? One at a time, sure. John? Yeah. So actually, it says on the first line, it says, it's, um, I don't want to well, read you the whole thing. An authorized department head will present the business office with an invoice or purchase order that has been approved by both the library director and the deputy treasurer slash treasurer and request to pay with the credit card. The department head or their appointed representative will make an appointment to meet with the business office and make the payment. The business office will enter the invoice into the library booking and accounting system for payment to the credit card issuer. Now, that's that's the ordering process. The reconciliation process where we pay the vendor is a separate appro approval process, which is which is described under the credit card reconciliation and payment process. So, so both uh, both of those approval processes are in the document. Bob? 
Okay. I mean, I can give you my edits to the document if you would like it to do this right now, and we'll do that right now. Um, you could, I mean, it I just guess, is not being reviewed by the budget committee, which is the normal process. Right. Well, I guess that aside, I mean, if you all want to take the time to do that, we can do that. Or Bob, if you want to send them to me outside the, the meeting, I'm happy to do it then too, to consider, you know, to look at the changes you're, you're suggesting. Okay. Bob, you want to do question, that and postpone it to the next meeting? Well, the question is, I don't, I don't quite know what we're talking about. I mean, is it possible to amend this proposal to accommodate what you're trying to 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 do? Yes. And if so if you would propose the amendment, then we could maybe get to the point where we, we could approve this. That's what I I, I just don't know whether that's or not fine. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you go down to on page one, one credit card. Hmm. Sec second line, and we'll be for use only by department heads as authorized and the library director. Okay. Policy for card use. Second line, a copy of the Jones Library Incorporated tax exemption letter rather than policy. Sure. Okay. Uh, second page, credit card order process. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, as authorized department head will present the business office with an invoice or purchase order, delete that has been approved with for approval okay. by both the direct the library director and treasurer, vice treasurer, and a request for to pay with the credit card. The next line, uh, delete department head or their appointed representative will make an appointment to meet with the, and it will just be the business office will make the payment. Hmm. Okay. 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 Um, moving down the page to payment setup at the end where it says at people bank uh, it'll be the library's corporate checking account period maybe at this moment it is people's yep. bank but yep. that should not yep. be part of a policy sure sure of course credit card account terms yeah. <clears throat> uh, second sentence the full account balance Delete will be drafted at least and replace it with is due within credit card 20 okay. days after and replace the your with the. Bob, can you just do that one more time? Okay, credit card account. Yep, terms. yep I'm with you. Second sentence the full yep. account balance is due within 20 days. Delete will be drafted at least. And replace the word your monthly statement with the monthly oh. statement. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Bob? Not without further discussion, but uh, you know that would be acceptable. Well, you need to make that as a motion, and then someone's going to second it, and then we're going to discuss it, and I, then we're going to approve it. I would it. propose that we amend the document as previously described. Thank you. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. Good. Okay. Any discussion of those changes? John, do you have any anything to say about the, those proposed changes? No, I think they're good changes. Yeah, good. I think they're fine. Yeah. Darren, do you have anything to say about those proposed changes? No, I'm good with them. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion of the proposed amendments? Okay, on approving the amendments that you just had read, Farah? Yes. Tammy. Are you wait. Who are we waiting for? Wait, Tammy. Tammy.
hear me? Okay, B Bob? Yes. Jean? Yes. Lee? Yes. Austin? Yes. So, um, Tammy, can you hear us? Okay, so let's um, record the vote as five in favor. Hold on, let's, look. let's see if Tammy can get back in. Approve. Tammy, okay, okay, that's, uh, we voted to yes. uh, accept the amendments. Well, now we're back to the amended document. Anything else to say about the amended document? Okay, so we now... Uh, want to have a motion. Uh, Bob, do you want to make the motion? No, the motion as previously drafted was <clears throat> to approve the proposal dated May 9, 9, 2024 as amended for an organizational credit card for the Jones Library, Inc. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so the, now the motion is on the floor to approve the credit card policy. Any dis, any further discussion? Okay, on the policy, Farah? Yes. <coughs> Bob? Yes. Jean? Yes. Lee? Yes. Tammy? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Uh, next item is investment committee. Well, just last item on the budget committee meeting is uh, <clears throat> for this year, the uh, budget had allowed for us to essentially spend all of the reserved state aid money, which is available and to spend the grand total of all that was received next year. Um, again, I am hoping and expecting that a revised budget will be prepared, um, which will reasonably accurately uh, describe what we think we are going to be spending um, next year, <clears throat> given both the the at least delayed transfer from the current building um, and at most continued uh, occupancy of this building. Uh, and I would uh, expect that uh, the board will will look forward to seeing that as soon as possible. Thank you. Anything else, Bob, budget wise? No. Okay, any questions for Bob on or Lee on the budget committee? Okay, investment. Okay. Um, I generally provide a report of the value of the uh, endowment and of the Woodbury Fund as of uh, April 30th, the end of the last month. I'm afraid I did not bring that to this uh, location, so um, I cannot provide that report. Okay. We do have a meeting scheduled for the investment committee to meet with uh, our advisors who are now called Mercer yep. uh, on the 21st, I believe at one o'clock. So anyone who wants to uh, observe that meeting, uh, we will be doing that meeting on, on that date and time. Thanks, thanks. Uh, any questions about investment? Okay, thanks, Bob. Uh, by the way, before um, hearing from the friends, I want to remind everybody that on June 5th, at four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, we are going to gather to celebrate, uh, recognize, and thank uh, Bob Pam. Uh, that will be in the Goodwin Room uh, again, beginning at uh, beginning at four o'clock. I hope uh, folks can um, folks can attend. 
Okay, uh, Mr. Morris. Good morning. Friends. Good morning. We have not had a meeting since uh, since your last meeting, so there's not much to report. Uh, we are going to meet this afternoon, um, and then we have an annual meeting, which is a public meeting, uh, on Sunday, June 9th at 3 o'clock uh, at the Munson Library, and I believe there will be a um, some discussion of the history of the libraries, um, which may be of some interest to the public. Um, and um, finally, I guess I would say um, there were some sentiments expressed by Kelly Irwin in public comment, and based on the conversations that we've had at, uh, in the Friends on the Friends board, um, I infer that uh, those sentiments that Kelly expressed are shared uh, by the whole board that we wish to be of assistance to the trustees and to the director going forward in this difficult time. Thank you. Um, Rich, you're meeting this afternoon. Is that what you said? Yes. What time are you meeting? Five o'clock. And where do you meet? At, in the Woodbury room. Great. Thanks. And thank you. Thank for you. The, thank you for the Thank you for the sentiments. I do want to say um, uh, we are we are not done. So the question of the status of the project going forward is not resolved. What we have resolved is that we're not going to accept the bid. Uh, and we're going to meet on the 20th of May uh, to, to talk more about where we are with respect to the project and where we are with respect to um, the alternative uh, repair um, option. Uh, and so we will have to have more, more conversations. Uh, we will have to talk with the library building committee uh, about uh, rejecting the bids and about these alternatives um, as we consider how to move forward. Okay, uh, director's report. I don't have anything other to, other than what I submitted to add. Thank you. Questions for the director. So I have a couple of questions for the director. First of all, um, again, I want to say in public uh, how grateful we are for the work that Sharon has done and continues to do. Uh, Sharon is a steady hand on the wheel and has shown yet again her capacity to adapt on the fly. And what Bob pointed out, of course, um, was true, which is we were poised to get ready to move out of the library. And so that's had to that's had to come to a stop. And in all of this, Sharon has done just as well as can be done. Uh, to make sure that what needs to be done is being done and has shown, again, a capacity to adapt on the fly. So I'm com completely grateful to Sharon for what it is that she is doing. I want to, Sharon, to the extent that you are able to share a little bit about uh, what's going on with the staff in light of where we are, the bid, the rejecting the bid, moving out and not moving out. Um, if you can share a little bit about what's going on with the staff, I think we're all um, concerned that people on the staff also have been operating under incredible stresses and difficulties. And uh, we want to make sure that they are doing as well as can be expected. So you want to say a little bit about about the staff it's hard it's hard on all of them yeah um it's every emotion under the sun and um uh they're pivoting they pivoted again on a dime um you know the first the first feeling is complete what and then, you know, it's sadness and then it's anger and frustration. And so what do we do next? So the uncertainty continues. And OK, so after they lift themselves up out of that, 
depression, sadness, um, then they're like, okay, well, that means we can do summer reading program. So that's, that's been, that's been awesome. That's been their light. They really love doing programming. And so they've, um, they've got a bunch of friends, uh, requests that are being submitted tonight for the, for the friends meeting. Um, and so they're excited to do that. And because of the built much, uh, do in part to the building project, you know, and COVID and, and all of the um, relationships that have been forming over the past five, six, seven years, um, we'll still be able to continue to have offsite programming and all of that. And, um, and then, you know, coming full circle to the, the uncertainty. So now we, we know we're going to be doing this during the summer here in this building. And um, we're working on, uh, minimal um, repairs that that we've been putting off, but we'll, we'll be doing that over the summer, and um, and then back to the uncertainty. What do we? What's going to happen this fall? So, um, so they're everywhere, but they're awesome. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. Any other questions for the director? So, Bob, before I recognize you, I do want to ask um, that we not forget uh, the amazing generosity uh, which enabled the renovation of the North Amherst Library. Yes. Uh, it is a beautiful facility um, that um, has been and will remain a gem of Amherst. And we would be remiss if we did not now, since the donor is known, uh, express on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the library, um, our gratitude to Hilda for the tremendous generosity uh, that enabled this uh, building project to go forward. Uh, oddly, the same thing that is happening with the Jones Library project happened with the North Amherst project. The cost went up substantially. And uh, the people whose vision it was to make sure that that library was uh, renovated and expanded uh, stayed the course. So I wonder if, um, Gene, you could draft a letter on behalf of the board, uh, conveying our incredible gratitude uh, to Hilda for the generosity that made uh, it possible to renovate uh, the North Amherst Library and send it on our behalf. Yeah, I can do that. I'll, I'll send it to you all just for approval. Um, but sure, I can take care of that today. Great. And does anybody else want to say anything about North Amherst? Just that it's Hilda Greenberg, and and you know her whole name is is worthy of note. It's Greenbaum. It's Hilda Greenbaum. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yes. No, yes. Sir. You're right. It, it was a very festive afternoon. I talked with a lot of different people, and um, I'm sorry she couldn't be there, but it was taped for her. Yeah, it's an amazing affirmation of the importance of libraries to the lives that people lead day to day in this um, in this town. I also think it's important uh, to say to Sharon and through Sharon to the staff that uh, there may be disagreements um, in town about how to proceed uh, given where we are. Those disagreements are legitimate. Uh, the questions that are asked are appropriate. But I think there is no disagreement in the town about the value uh, that everyone, whatever their views are about the details of a building project or the financing of the building project, I think there is no disagreement in the town about uh, the value that everyone 
puts on the work that is done at the Jones, at the Munson, and at the, the North Amherst Library. And it's important to communicate to you and through you to the staff uh, the un, unflagging support, appreciation, and value uh, that everyone in this town feels uh, for the work that is done in our um, in our in our libraries. Farah. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, double up on what Austin said because every time I go in the library, which is once or twice a week. I always check in with, you know, people at the children's room and at the front desk and they're all, you know, they're kind of on shaky ground now, but they're always so upbeat and positive and uh, it's pretty amazing. And thank you for everything you do, Sharon. Thank you, Bob. Um, separate point. Uh, last month, I had said that I would provide uh some prints of the uh, website, which is offered by a different library in Connecticut. Yeah. Um, and I actually brought that to the uh, library office and I had hoped and suggested that it be reviewed by people who are on this board, as well as people who are running the, the current uh, website uh, in hopes that uh, it is provides some useful insights into ways to make it uh, a very friendly and an upbeat kind of place to go. I don't know whether that has happened, but I am asking that question now. Uh, Tammy. Yeah, I'd just like to express my appreciation to the staff and um Whenever I'm in there, they're they're smiling and helpful, and they're upbeat, even given all the stress that they've been under over the last few months. And to Sharon, um, I can't thank you enough for all that you do. We're very grateful for your hard work and perseverance under difficult circumstances. Thank you. Okay, Bob, did you get your question? You just asked the question there. Yes. So I don't know to whom it was addressed, actually. So I just wanted to make sure you got I asked it. whether any of the board members had looked at it and they asked whether it had been shown to any of the staff who currently uh, build and, and maintain our website. Yeah, I have not seen it. I don't know if anybody else has. Nope. I've not seen it yet. I haven't been out to the library since. Okay. Sharon, do you know whether it, that has been seen by any of the staff? So the staff have seen your suggestions um, previously and, and um, they're here for people to look at. Um, so your comments have been noted. Thank you. Okay, so again, we are going to reconvene on the May 20th at 9 o'clock in the morning um, in the hope that we will have more to say about where we are uh, with respect to the project and where we are. Uh, hopefully, I don't know if buildings and facilities will uh, have a chance to get its heads together before next Monday. Uh, if, they, if you can, that's great to begin to talk a little bit about um, uh, what needs to be done going forward on renovation and um, and repair, should we go in that direction. Okay, so I, I think we are, I think that we are all set. Anything else that needs to be said? Oh, yes. Excuse me. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.